Hi everybody, I'm Anthony Shaw. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. And I'm gonna pick up where Christopher left off and take you through the next step in your Django journey. So Christopher showed how you can create a, uh, a new project and create an application inside that project once you've got Django installed. I followed the same steps, but um, in terms of the naming, I've called my project just simply project. Um, I'm just as creative as Christopher with names and the application name is really cloud and throughout this uh, next series of videos we'll be actually showing you how to build out this sample application called Rally Cloud, which is a space travel agency. It's a fictional company that we've made up um, to help illustrate some of the core concepts in Django. So the next concept I want to show you is to do with models and how Django actually helps you describe what data you want to put in a database. Now databases are super important when it comes to web development because often you want to keep information about um, what it is the website is doing. So in our case, we've got this fictional space travel agency called Relic Cloud, and we want to record information in the database like what space cruises are there, where are they going, who are the passengers, and if people want to interact with the website, then we need to make sure that that data persists somewhere. Django makes your life so much easier when working with databases because it actually deals with a lot of the complexity for you. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in our sample app. So in our project structure, we've got the project folder, which is the all the settings and stuff like that. Um, and then we just got, this is the boilerplate uh, code, which is created when I run the start app command on the console. There's a file in here called models.py and we're gonna build this out over this video. So inside models, what you need to do is basically describe um, what tables you'd want in your database. So what things do you want to put in a database? What properties should they have? If you're used to database design, basically your models become tables and your fields become columns. So with our fictional travel agency, the first thing we're gonna do is they need to go somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, we want our space cruises to actually go somewhere. So we can create a model called destination. And this class that we define needs to inherit from a built-in type called models.model. The next step is then to add fields to this class, which become the properties of this object. So if we have a destination in the database, um, we probably want to give it things like a name, for example. So let's add a property called name. And we also need to give it a type. So in Django, there are a number of built-in types for all of the properties in your models. So the way you access them is from the models namespace. And a common one you'll probably use is the char field. Char field is basically a way of having strings in the database. And in our case, we want the name to be um, text. So let's use a char field to accomplish that. It has a lot of options. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with the, with the char field. There's definitely a few things you want to put in here by default to make sure that we don't go crazy. First of all, we want to make sure that the you can't have more than one destination with the same name. So if somebody adds Mars to the database, we don't want two Mars uh, items in the database, so that would become uh, confusing. So we can set the unique property to true. For our name field, we want to make sure that it's required. So there's a few ways of doing that with data models. One is that you can make sure that the uh, entry can never be null. So it, it always has to exist, it always has to be set. So you set the null property to false. Another thing is that it might have a string, but just with no text inside, so just an empty string. So we also don't want to allow uh, blank items. We don't want the name to get too large as well. So, um, you know, just the names of the planets, I guess we might go to just have a think in your head what the maximum length might be. It's good with database design to set maximum length for char fields anyway. I think it would probably set a sensible default if you didn't provide this, uh, but in our case, we're gonna set that to be 50. 
Now there are, like I said before, there are a huge number of uh, options for this particular field. So you probably find that you'll often use the same defaults when using things like people's names or destinations or descriptions, for example. Char field is good if it's a small piece of text. If you want a bit more than that, you can use the text field instead. So if we want to have a description of our destination, then we can use models.text field. Okay, so we don't want people to go crazy on the uh, the description. So let's set the max length to be 2000. So that's 2000 characters. And again, let's make sure that's required by setting null to be null to be false and blank to be false. Okay, so so far we, all we've done is describe this class inside the models.py file. This doesn't exist yet in the database as we don't actually have a database. So the way that you initialize the database with Django is you use the manage.py command to control your database configuration. In your project, you would have got this boilerplate settings.py file. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Don't worry too much about a lot of the settings in here. These are sensible defaults. Something that is important though is if you scroll down to the databases section, you'll see there's the default configuration for databases using something called SQLite. If you're not familiar with SQLite, SQLite is a lightweight SQL database and it uses a local file. So you don't need to have a database server running. It basically just uses a file in your directory. So let's bring up a terminal and we're gonna put in some commands to initialize our first database. So the first thing we want to do is run a command in manage.py called make migrations. What make migrations will do is it will look at our models file and it will look to see what types we've defined. So these are the new type types we've defined and it's gonna create a model for destination. So you see here it's described, okay, I've created a migration and it's actually a Python file and I'll show you in a second what, that, what that's for. Now these migrations should live within the source code of our project because when we deploy locally, it will create all the tables for us. If we deploy in production, it should again create all the tables we want those to be consistent. So we want to make sure that, you know, if we move to a new environment or we deploy into the cloud, for example, you don't want to have to go and create the database, create all the tables, create all the columns. Remembering the names and configuration of all that database will be tricky. So Django does this for you and it does that using a system called migrations. So it will have created this initial migration file. You, again, you don't have to worry too much about what's going on here. But this is basically a script that can be run on the server to connect to the SQL database and make sure that the table, all the columns and the settings of the columns is how it is described inside this Python file. So we can do that locally by running python manage.py migrate. And the migrate command will have created a new database for us here db.sqlite3 and it would have applied the migrations to make sure that the tables uh, exist for what we have in our application. Mm -hmm.